years ago, I made this video where I was talking about the sort of callouts that are relevant and the type of callouts people should actually be making. Back at the time, callouts in competitive Splatoon were pretty lacking. Most of the time, teams would only really provide callouts when they were dead. So if you were like died to, say, an E-leader, then you would make a callout. Between that, there were like intermixed callouts, but nothing was really good. A lot of the callouts were just really bad. So I made a video talking about the sort of callouts that are important and what players should be doing. And thankfully, the, <laughs> the callouts have improved over the years. But there is still a little bit of things that I noticed that teams still lack to this day. And it's actually something that I started coaching when I was working with the team Supernova. And now I wanted to make a video talking about it so I could share some of this information to other people. Maybe some teams that are looking to improve their communication and improve their teamwork going forward. And start to use some of these different types of callouts and different types of things that teams that even now still aren't even really using. I want to preface that a lot of these things I'm going to be talking about actually came from watching other games. After I stopped actively competing in like 2018, I started watching a little bit more esports of other games like Overwatch, Counter-Strike, and now I watch Valorant. I've basically just been watching pros of other games to see how other communities are doing things. And I noticed that a lot of other communities have very, very active callouts and very descriptive callouts, which is something that this scene has pretty much always lacked. So when I was brought on to be a coach for Supernova, I tried to work in some of these new callouts that I've been seeing other communities use and sort of like toning them into a way that works for Splatoon, basically. And so the easiest thing and the first thing I want to start out with is numbers and what i mean by that is say you're in the middle of a fight we all know at the top of the screen it shows the amount of squids and octolings that are alive and which ones aren't well most of the time people aren't actually paying attention to that now why do i say that well it's actually because one thing that i started to incorporate from other games is teams informing each other of when they have the advantage and when they have the disadvantage Callouts like I got one or I got two have been pretty common over the years, but teams don't inform each other when they're in the advantage or when they have the disadvantage, especially at lower level teams where you you feel this need where you have to be a little bit more careful when you're down numbers. These sort of callouts can be a little bit more important. So what I try to have them do is incorporate callouts like we are up one, we are up two, we are even, we are down one. These are very simple callouts you can make that immediately inform everyone on the team of the situation that they're in. If you hear, we're even, then it means that you can still take fair fights. Even if both teams just lose one person, that is still an even fight, and teams can still choose to invest in uh, their like specials and stuff. If you have like down one, then you can simply say, we're down one, meaning that teams now know that their players have to be a little bit more careful and a little bit more cautious as they are in a disadvantaged state. These callouts are very simple, very quick, and it actually informs a whole lot. This is actually something that somebody that's like a support player, your armor player, your junior, your NZAP, something that spends a lot more of its time out of fights and just sort of painting and getting it special, this is something that a weapon in that role can do very well. Just quickly glance and get an idea of what the situation is like. Another thing I've noticed, and this is mostly boils down to teams and players knowing each other, is oftentimes I'm watching players and teams scrim or playing tournaments, and they refer to another player as the player rather than the weapon. So in cases where you know the opponent and you say, oh, I got so-and-so, that doesn't really convey much to your team. They don't, unless they're not paying, unless they're paying attention to the top, which we've already established a lot of people aren't actively doing, it's actually more important to convey the weapon that is down. That may sound super simple and you're probably thinking, well, no duh, but it's surprisingly uncommon. A lot of players just say the name of the player that's down, which unless you just know is not actively conveying enough. If you just say like, oh, I got the junior, oh, I got the E-leader, it does a better job at conveying what the actual fight looks like now and who is actually out of the fight rather than just saying some player's name. Another pretty simple and effective call that I don't really see all that often is actually from the armor weapons. 
Say you're the armor player on your team, you're playing a junior, you're playing the Anzap or any other weapon that has armor, you should actually be conveying how close you are to your armor to your teammates. Now, granted, specials in Splatoon build really quickly, so it's to some people they might not see, think it's important to say something like that. But when you're a, such a vital part of the team and your special has such a high impact like Ink Armor does, you should be conveying stuff like half to armor, almost to armor, nowhere near, things like that. Very simple, very easy, very short callouts that allow your team to know when they are close to being able to push in and be a little bit more aggressive or when they have to be a bit more careful because there's no chance of an armor coming relatively soon. These are another thing that you can work into any sort of communication. Just have your armor player be a little bit more vocal with their special charge. Now this next one isn't going to really come up too often, but it is something I see pretty commonly, which might sound contradictory to what I said, but depending on the type of player and the type of team you are, this might not come up. But a lot of the teams that I've been seeing playing scrims and tournaments and stuff like that, and a lot of the stuff I've been reviewing myself, Oftentimes, teams and players spend a good chunk of their time just saying nonsense. It's referred to as flooding comms. Basically, just saying things that aren't relevant to anything that's actually occurring in the fight or the match or anything like that. Oftentimes, I hear, more often than not, just people saying something like, Oh, how did he not die? Or, I shot him five times already. Or, that guy's lagging. These sorts of things just flood comms. It's useless information, things that nobody cares about, nobody needs, and it's just worthless comms. Now, obviously, this might sound very trivial and obvious that this isn't something people should be doing, but you'd be surprised how often it actually comes up. You should be trying to figure out what it is that you're saying and see if the things that you're saying when you're talking to your team in the middle of a game is actually relevant. The things you should be focusing on is just purely anything that is tied to the game. If you are distressed that somebody, you know, maybe tanked a few more shots than they should, or maybe they lagged around a little bit, there's no need to say that sort of information. And it's something I've actually experienced in the past. You can actually upset your teammates by saying those sort of things. Teammates can get upset or annoyed at hearing these sort of stuff, and then they will stop talking, or they will lower the amount of call-outs that they are doing because they are getting frustrated with hearing stuff like that. So uh, basically just be careful about the things you are actually saying and try to avoid flooding comms with things that aren't pertaining to the actual game. This might not be super relevant for lower and mid-tiered teams where for the most part your comms are probably going to be a little bit slower than the higher level teams. But if you're looking to get to higher levels, you really need to focus on your comms being very specific to the game and nothing else. Another pretty simple call that can be made is say you have only one person left on your team. Say you are the only person left on your team alive. We've already established making calls like you're down three and things like that, which can still apply in situations like this. You can inform your last standing person that they are down three, that you are down three. But another effective call is to simply say you're the last you are last, which means that you are the last one alive. It's a pretty short call, and it can immediately convey to the person that is still alive that they are standing alone, and goes back to the whole not really paying attention to the top of the screen, and from there they can decide whether or not to abandon the fight or abandon their positioning, or they can give some confirmation like, yeah, I'm safe, or I'll back up, or I will jump out, Things like that. You can also follow it up with, your last, you should get out, or your last, jump out. Things like that as well. And the final thing I wanted to talk about is more so uh, after you die. So we mentioned at the start that a lot of early callouts were basically just when you would die and you would see the person who actually killed you. Something that still stems from this very point in time is that people will just call out the position that player was in when they died. So what am I trying to get at that? I'm basically saying you should be continuously calling out when you have that sort of information. If you are constantly seeing a person that had killed you and is moving around, you shouldn't just say, oh, this is where I died. You should be constantly calling where they are moving. And you'd be surprised that that actually still doesn't happen very often. A bunch of the higher level teams are doing stuff like that, but pretty much anyone that I watch that isn't like at the top of the game is only making the call for where they died. If you died on like you're playing the reef 
and you die on bridge. And the guy who killed you uh, killed you on bridge as well. And you go, oh, splatter shot on bridge. And then you see the splatter shot drop down and is moving towards the left tree. Most of the time, I will see players not call that they dropped off bridge and moved left. They would just leave the call out as on bridge. That's really not helpful, and that can actually result in more people dying because you aren't actually calling where the person is moving. You get this point of time of being able to actually see where they're moving, so you should be providing that information. You should be actively calling out as you see someone moving around in your kill cam. This is something that is shockingly uncommon, believe it or not. So with all that, those are some pretty simple comms that I've seen come from other games that you can help to use uh, and improve your team communication. Stuff like in providing more information about the fights that you're in or the fights you can and can't take, the providing more information about your armor, providing more information about where people are moving, things like that that may seem super trivial and obvious now, but it is surprising how few teams and how few players actually utilize these sorts of calls. And it wasn't until I actually started watching other esports that I realized that this stuff is still super uncommon. We have certainly come a long way of the days where I had to make a video basically telling people they needed to be making callouts while they were still alive, to now that that is basically the norm, but we're still lacking. With Splatoon 3 coming up, we still have a long way to go with improving our callouts but I feel like this will definitely help a little bit more people with the, the important sort of stuff. What more things we need to be working into the callouts that we're making and the changes that would need to be made to help, you know, grow a little bit higher in the ladder. Help, help teams that are at the lower spectrum start to focus in on the things that they should be saying and the things they shouldn't be saying. And if you're curious, some of the things in my older videos still sort of apply. Though obviously a good chunk of it was still pertaining to Splatoon 1, but the core essentials are still the same. So I will leave a link to that video in case you are a newer viewer of mine. You can go and check out that super old video and see what I said back then. But that's it for now. I want to thank you all for watching, and I will see you all next time.